Welcome to SC24, the Supercomputing Conference here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Dave Nicholson with 6.5 on the road, and I am joined here in Dell's massive presence on the show floor at SC24 by Eric from Dell. Eric, welcome. Good morning. We're here to talk about something that is particularly interesting in the space that is high performance computing, supercomputing, all stuff related to AI. And that is the idea of rack scale computing and integration. Uh, I kind of want to set the stage by saying that I have built my own gaming PC before. So I think that I should be able to rack and stack my own AI gear. What do you say? That's probably a bad idea. Okay, tell me um, why. Well, uh, your gaming computer probably weighed 30 pounds and was air cooled. And most of these AI systems weigh about 250 pounds and many of them are liquid cooled. And the kind of liquid cooling that you get with your home computer, if you do a liquid cooled home computer, is about this much worth of capacity when you need this much worth of capacity. So this isn't simple racking and stacking like we may be used to even in the enterprise data center context. Exactly, in the enterprise, you know, in, in the standard data center, you rack to compute, you plug in two power cords, you know, two, three network cables, and, and you're done. Um, and each one of those systems, you know, only generates a couple of kilowatts worth of, uh, worth of heat or consumes that much power. So in, so in the context, when, when we think of Dell and enterprise IT, often people will think of storage subsystems, we'll think of servers themselves, but you're saying that this rack scale integration of network, storage, compute, all of that is something that requires, let alone uh, uh, water cooling if necessary. Um, that's something that you do to integrate parts from a whole variety of partners. Talk about that integration process and validation process. Yeah, so um, you know, within the server, you've got integration between CPUs and GPUs from a variety of, of vendors. And because of the weight and, and, and heat requirement, thermal requirements of these systems, a whole lot of engineering has to go into just making sure that, you know, from the fact that you don't want the metal bending to you don't want the thing burning up, um, there's a lot of thermal engineering that goes into just designing these servers. And then when you take eight, nine, 10, 12 of those, put them in a relatively speaking small space of a rack, you have to have a lot of cool air coming in and you have to be able to take the hot air coming out and do something with it other than just eject it into the data center for an air conditioner to, to um, take care of. Um, that works when you're talking about 10 kilowatts per rack, 15 kilowatts per rack. What are, you, what are we talking today though? Um, we've got racks that range anywhere from about 60, 50 to 60 kilowatts all the way up to 130 kilowatts. Okay. So you have to, once you get above that, that 40 to 50 limit, you have to do liquid cooling. Um, generally, you'll also need rear door heat exchangers so that you can get all of that heat rejected to liquid um, and then you know, send out the data center to be cooled. Yeah, yeah, and for folks who, when you hear 50 or 60 kilowatts, it doesn't mean anything. Each kilowatt is roughly equivalent to 1.3 horsepower. So 100 kilowatt rack, that's 130 horsepower engine running at redline. <laughs> right. You think about the power. And, and it is a 42U rack still standard height, what no. you're seeing? So no? what we're seeing now is um, 48U okay. and 52U racks. Okay. Um, because you need both the extra height because of a lot of the networking that goes into these racks. Your, you know, your typical enterprise server, two or three network cables. Your, typical AI server can be as high as 12, as low as nine. Including the liquid cooling or are you? No, that's just, that's just networking. Okay, okay, just network. And then the, um, on the liquid side, there's, there are no industry standards for liquid cooling right now. Um, they're, they're, it's really in, the, in its infancy. So for example, um, our, our recently announced XE9680L and 9685L, there's 12 cooling hoses that come out the back that have to be connected correctly to the manifolds. Okay. We, we get beyond that with our integrated rack 7000 where all of the, the server nodes 
slide into the rack and have a blind mate connection with the DLC manifold. So that way you don't risk human error in connecting the wrong host to the wrong place or what have you. You just slide it in, click it shut, and you know that the liquid's gonna go where it needs to go. So D Dell has customers data, I'm thinking of the enterprise data center customer as opposed to the you know, cloud service provider customer. Um, you have data center customers you've, you've worked with literally for decades. Some of those, de some of those data centers have been around for decades. For de for decades. Uh, is it unusual to enter a space and find that there isn't enough power dropped in to oh, support the power in a 48U rack with all that stuff? What, what does that look like typically? I mean, yeah, it, it's extremely common. The, the typical legacy data center, 15 kilowatts is a lot. You know, okay. 20 is like top tier. So when you're dealing with a server that draws, you know, roughly 10 kilowatts, you get one, maybe two in a rack. Um, but, but it goes beyond just the power availability. Can the floor support the weight? Um, a f one of these fully loaded racks can get close to 3,000 pounds. Um, and then can the air handling system, you know, handle the, 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 the cooling required? And are the doors tall enough to let a 48U rack through? And we know in, in, in some areas, especially in, in Europe, they're not. So we will have 42U rack options, but obviously a shorter rack, you can put less in it. But in the, in the, in the large enterprise, in the CSP space, um, we're seeing everything being 48 and, and 52U. Do you have SKUs for rack scale products or are these designed in collaboration with individual customers or both? What, what, is, what does that look like? I imagine that um, you may, if you're going into a situation where the power constraints are fixed and they're telling you, you're not getting more than 30 kilowatts in this rack, period. Yep. Well, then that might preclude some certain solutions. So when you talk about rack scale specifically and rack scale management, is it the concept that you make sure that it's all going to work together or are they prepackaged? Or no. so, what does it look like? So we're, we're very purposefully not doing the single skew up for a rack. Um, because we want to bring Dell's build to order capabilities okay. into this space. So based on, you know, we'll help you do a data center assessment and then based on the results of that, we can say, okay, you can fit four of those or two of those or, or you know, whatever the case may be. And then within that, okay, this is, the, this is what you want in the server, all the, the vast uh, configuration options that we have for our servers, you can pick from all of that. And then based on the data center environment, what PDUs do you need? What height rack do you need? Um, can you use an in-rack CDU? Do you need an in-row CDU? All of that stuff is tailored to the customer. So you, 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 you won't be able to go to Dell.com and go click, 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 buy now and get one of these racks. But if I'm hypothetically a data center customer, you know, I'm an enterprise customer, and I'm starting with the equivalent of two racks of stuff, probably a best practice for me to then have that be my standard, my personal standard. Yes. So call it my personal SKU. Probably yep. makes no sense to come in and say, you know, I'm going to try five different kinds of coolant distribution units, you know, cooling distribution. Exactly. That be, be, so, so, if, so effectively, they're working with you to create their own pod of infrastructure. Exactly That right. can then be copied exact moving forward. E exactly right. And I mean, even, even in our sales tools, we, we, we follow that flow of design the compute, okay, how many computes do you want in a rack, okay, design the rest of the rack, okay, how many racks do you want? And then, you know, you say 10 racks and the sales tools even automatically calculate all the right numbers and, and, and all of that. Yeah, so I'm, I come from a hardware background, so I generally think of software people as weak, <laughs> frankly, but, I guess there's something to be said for this idea that if you're integrating all of these hardware components together, it would be kind of nice to have less than 10 software interfaces to manage it. Do you, <laughs> do you, do you have rack scale management software? Yes, so um, 
uh, we, we have software and it, it's, it's based on our existing management infrastructure that we have, mm -hmm. where you bring together the compute, the networking, where it is in the rack, um, the, the PDU, CDU, you know, anything with an ethernet port okay. um, is managed via this, this console and it gives you a, a per rack view and because all of our servers have thermal sensors, we're able to give a thermal view of the front and the rear of the rack. Um, and, but, but that's all nice fluffy stuff. What's really important is if you've got 10 racks worth of gear and they're all liquid cooled and one server springs a leak, you wanna make sure that you shut down the correct rack that that server's in. So if you, if, you know, through the course of, of, of the years, you've moved a server from rack one to rack five, and, you, and the management system doesn't know that, if that server springs a leak, the management system will shut down rack one where the server is not, and the leak will continue going on in this other rack. So it really becomes important to truly understand the rack scale and um, where everything is and what's connected to what so that you don't end up in situations where you're turning off the wrong thing or, or what have you. Yeah, liquid cooling, what could possibly go wrong with liquid and electronic components? Exactly. What, what's the kind of minimum entry level point for someone? I can imagine a small to medium enterprise um, wanting to dabble in something like uh, model training, uh, or, or I should say fine tuning. Uh, maybe they want their bespoke data to not be off in the cloud somewhere. They definitely want it on-premises. But maybe they only need an eight-node an eight GPU cluster, maybe 16. Uh, at what point does it become rack scale? And can you start with like half a rack with a plan to scale out to a full rack? Ab absolutely. Because these things are expensive. This is This is not, you know... I want to want to say something clever here, but we're talking millions of dollars in in cases for 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 a system like this. Yes. So you can start with less than a full rack Absolutely. with plans to intelligently scale. Absolutely. Okay. Um, generally speaking, if you only need say four nodes, we recommend you just go air air cooled. Okay. Um, as you as you start moving up in node count, that's the 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 power consumption and heat starts growing, and you. Um, uh, you'll you'll start wanting to to view things really by the rack. Okay. Um, but we'll have solutions that go from very small all the way up to to massive. And some of our systems, for example, the the IR seven thousand uh, platform, which is our uh, OCP ORV three uh, rack uh, infrastructure, we sell um, starting with uh, 18 sleds or 36 nodes. Okay. And then depending on the height of the rack, you just add more nodes, you add more power shelves as needed. And you know, it's, it's almost like a blade chassis. Where you just slide your nodes in and oh, our, this rack is full, bring in another rack, rinse and repeat. Final question for you. Um, if you were to talk to someone who's been managing a data center Managing IT really knows hardware, but isn't aware of what the requirements are moving forward. What do you? What are the? What are the kinds of things that would surprise them? Or what do you? What What do you think is sort of a surprising thing to understand about this that some people overlook? You You talked about things like power density and the massive amount of cooling and the weight. Um, you already touched on some of those, but is there anything else you can think of that people tend to forget? about how different the future is than the past? The complexity in which these things are all interconnected goes far beyond traditional uh, enterprise networking. You've got dedicated GPU fabrics okay. for all the GPUs to communicate with each other. Okay. Then you've got what we call north-south fabrics for data to get in and in and out. You've got management networks, you've got you know, all of your, your liquid cooling, which is a network of water and, and coolant. Um, so it, it, it's really a much more complicated thing than just, okay, yeah, I got to run a couple of ethernet cables from here to there. Yeah. 
very, very interesting. It's very interesting because one approach could be we're coming out with an appliance and it's going to have a skew. But what does that do? That eliminates all of the wonderful choice that exactly you're famous right. for as Dell democratizes AI, if you will. So this makes a lot of sense. So, um, Eric, I think it's, uh, it's a fascinating look at what is the future for HPC, supercomputing in general, but specifically for folks dealing with AI at all. It's this idea of integrating at the rack scale. It's what Dell does very well. Frankly, it's what Dell has done very well for a long time. It's just gotten more and more complicated. So Eric, you're, you're going to have a job for as long as you, you want a job. Yeah, Congratulations. There's, there's a lot of work to it do. It gets more and more complicated. AI not taking our jobs. Um, hopefully AI not taking my job. I figure I've got a few weeks. Uh, for 6.5 on the road here in the Dell booth at FC24, I'm Dave Nicholson. Stay tuned for more supercomputing action.